Last year, we published a video looking at some advertising postcards for a music hall entertainer named Horace Monto. Billing himself as a former soldier in the Royal Scots Fusiliers, we had been able to uncover a fair amount of information on his music hall career, but finding any real information on who he actually was, and whether there was any truth in his claims of military service, proved to be more difficult. If you haven't seen that video, click the link in the corner to watch it so you'll be up to speed on where we are so far. So, now you're caught up, let's quickly summarise what we know. Horace Monto claimed to have served for 13 years in the Royal Scots Fusiliers, and had served in the South African War, winning the Queen's South Africa Medal with six clasps. An advertisement he placed in one newspaper gave us the information that he was married, and that she possibly lived in the Lancaster area. The surname Montgomery seemed to fit, and possibly led to his stage surname of Monto being a nickname he'd picked up earlier in his life. We also had a possible year of his death, with his listing in an obituary section of a 1937 edition of the stage newspaper. Obviously, this was not much to go on, and finding his real name would be almost impossible based on the small amount of evidence we had, but during the last year, we then obtained the third advertising postcard, which Monto must have given out to potential bookings. We'll get to the details in the front, but first let's look at the back. We knew a little about his act, but now we have what seems to be a reasonably detailed breakdown of what it entailed. An introducing song, then a story. Demonstrations of instrumentation, including the grand concert piano, the fiddle, banjo, and then a trick solo on the mandolin. This was then followed by his playing of the spoons, and then swinging clubs while dancing at the same time. All in all, his act ran for 15 minutes. As described in playbills and adverts, certainly the versatile soldier Monto described himself as. The real reward of this card though is the front. First of all, another photo of Monto, this time in what appears to be his Royal Scots Fusiliers uniform. We'd actually seen this photo used before in a newspaper review of his act, but the quality of the image was too poor for us to be able to use. Another feature is an opinion of his act, which Monto is keen to point out as public opinion, not mine. The most prominent feature of this postcard, however, is the line at the top stating his permanent address, 73 Grasmere Road, Lancaster. Armed with a potential surname, Montgomery, and now an address, we managed to locate a register of electors from 1914. The register shows both the current address and, for electoral purposes, the previous address of less than 12 months ago. With a previous address of number 73, and at that point residing at number 68 on the same street, is James William Montgomery. Having possibly found our man, we wanted to find some evidence to confirm this beyond all doubt, so we decided to take a look at the newly released 1921 census. With all the information we have at hand, we tracked down the entry for 68 Grasmere Road, and living there in 1921 was James William Montgomery and his wife Teresa. More importantly, James listed his occupation as music hall artiste. Unfortunately for James, despite being represented by an agent, he had to state that he was out of work. Armed with a full name and an approximate year of birth of 1871, we set out checking many of the sources which had drawn a blank previously. This time, we were able to locate census records and, more importantly, military records. So now we know a lot more of the story. Let's tell the story of James William Montgomery. James was born in Lancaster in 1871. His father, Joseph Montgomery, was a gardener. He was born in Ireland, as was his wife, Sarah, and their elder son, also called Joseph. James doesn't appear in the 1871 census as he had not yet been born, but ten years later he's there as a school pupil. Joseph Jr. is no longer living with the family, but James has been joined by a younger brother John and a sister Margaret. His father Joseph is by this time a general labourer. By the 1891 census, James is no longer living with his parents, as two years previously, on the 1st of January 1889, he had attested as a soldier in the Royal Scots Fusiliers, becoming Private Number 2504. His absence from the 1891 census is due to his spending six years in the East Indies with his regiment from 1890 until 1896 when he returned home and transferred to the reserve. Two years after his return, he married Theresa Ganey, an 18-year-old from his hometown of Lancaster. At the time of his marriage, James gave his occupation as what looks to be oil boiler. The first recorded notice we have of his performing career would not be until 1899, the following year. When the South African War broke out in 1899, James had to put his fledgling performing career on hold, as he was recalled to full-time military service. He went with his regiment in October of that year, 
arriving at the Cape on the 18th of November 1899. They became part of 6th Brigade under Major General Sir Geoffrey Barton, and one month later they were involved in the British defeat at the Battle of Colenso, where they suffered 12 men killed, 20 wounded, and 6 officers and 39 men taken prisoner. As he would later advertise, his medal entitlement did indeed amount to the South African Medal with six clasps, these being Cape Colony, Orange Free State, Trigela Heights, Relief of Ladysmith, South Africa 1901, and South Africa 1902. These last two were awarded as he did not qualify for the King's South African Medal as he returned to Britain in December 1901, before the qualifying dates of the King's Medal between January and May 1902. His total time with the army amounted to the 13 years he advertised, and his time spent abroad was the exact amount stated in his promotional material, 8 years and 134 days. After this, we know his life became one of engagements across the country, performing his act to music halls and theatres. As far as we can tell, James and Teresa never had any children. Teresa passed away in 1932, at the age of 52, and four years later she was followed by James, who died in 1936. While we don't know the exact date of his death, his burial took place on the 8th of February. While we still have some gaps in our knowledge of James, for example, we can't find him anywhere on the 1911 census, we have what is probably the most complete picture we can hope to achieve. James, or Horace as he might have preferred, packed a lot into his 64 years, and in some small way, he's not been forgotten. <laughs>